great good morning to all of you again uh, it's a great time to discuss an interesting facts that is we know is buzzword in the field of medicine human health pharmaceutical sciences that what are the reason for the failure of drugs can be anti cancer can be anti diabetic or any class of the drug most of the time these drugs are successful in case of uh, animal model and specifically today i will refer uh, rodents rat mouse etc and our these drugs are able to show the desired efficacy responses in the animal model but once it is translated into the humans for the clinical perspective it fails majority of the times so what may be the reason and that is why today uh, i thought i should discuss that the failure of drugs from animal models to the humans what are the reasons definitely reasons are many but this particular discussion is very uh, out of box and other way round and today i would like to link the whether the vitamin c synthesis gene that is glu glucosine i will describe later on so whether the the differential presence of these vitamin c synthesis in glu gene from rodents to the humans is going to or whether it contributes for to an extent for the failure of drugs from animal models to the humans and that is what the today and it's very interesting uh to understand how the the nature has played during the evolution that rodent like mice mouse or the rat they are privileged with the presence of functional vitamin c synthesis gene this one that is the geology gu allo gene but the human the whole vitamin c synthesis gene is pseudogen or non functional so whether these distinctiveness from the rodents to the human may be one of the potential uh, contributing factors for the uh, the failure of drugs from rodent model to the human model so before i will go to the pathway of uh, vitamin c synthesis gene and how it is well connected here uh, first i would like to give you the idea that the failure of the drugs from the rodent model to the human model why fails reasons of failures so there are many way to explain here most acceptable fact is genetic or epigenetic uh differences okay another factor is also sometime explained that you know the dietary or environmental factors it also can maybe the rodent model has one way or one type of the dietary patterns or the environmental patterns and the human has different that is why the distinctiveness in terms of failure of drugs from the rodent model to the human model another very important is also the difference in the evolutionary paths from the rodent model to the human model okay but one of the explanation i'm going to discuss today whether the the absence or non functionality of a vitamin c synthesis in glo in human whether it is one of the explanation for the failure of the drugs from a rodent model to the human model so for that you know my dear uh, friends 
we have to look into the vitamin C synthesis pathway. Okay, so here is the path. Okay, so my dear friend, if you look at here the uh, the pathway, and uh, I have to use the innovation here. Okay, so if you look at here, the vitamin C synthesis pathway and this pathway specifically we are discussing for uh, the animal model, okay? So from the glucose to the glucose one phosphate, uh, then UDP uh, pyrophosphorylase, then it is converted to the UDP D glucose. And uh, then from UDP D glucose, that is a UDP D glucosurine. It is very important intermediate metabolic product for the vitamin C synthesis in animal model. And now this glucosurinate UDP is converted into the gluco D glucosurinate and then glunate and one way it is going to enter into the pentose phosphate pathway. But this glunate in some of the animal model is converted into the L-glunolecton and then ascorbic acid. Here is the point. In case of rodent like mice, rat, this glunogene that is glunolecton oxidase is functional. So what may be happening here through uh, this pathway from the here to here and then to the L-ascorbic acid, this intermediate UDP D glucosurinate is utilized for the production of vitamin C and it is also referred as ascorbic acid. So then what? What is the link with the failure of the drugs? Here is the explanation. This UDP D glucosurinate in case of rodent, mice or rat is channelized for both purpose for vitamin C synthesis and also to an extent for the drug metabolism. It is important, look at. So this UDP2 glucosurinate is also used for the drug metabolism, that is through the glucosurinidation. That means in the rodent model, the UDP D glucose, that is the very important for the drug metabolism or genobiotic purpose is utilized for the vitamin C synthesis. So what is the whole proposition is here in case of human and one more thing, the liver is the organ where this gene is present. Liver is the organ where ascorbic acid is synthesized. Liver is the organ and specifically in the hepatocytes, endoplasmic reticulum is the cell organ where this enzyme is present. So what is the link here? In case of human, this vitamin C synthesis is missing. So majority of the UDP D glucosurinate is channelized for drug metabolism. So whatever drug we are putting on the humans for the trial or efficacy or the uh, uh, success or failure, these drugs are metabolized. In comparison to the rodents, in the rodents, there are the same pathway, uh, let me declare, the same pathway is utilized for the vitamin C synthesis and same is utilized for the drug metabolism. That means in the rodents, once we are putting some drug for the evaluation or the uh, or the you can say the uh, the estimation of what is the efficacy etc so those drugs are not metabolized as efficiently as in case of human that means human versus rodent model the possibilities are there the presence or absence of this gulo gene is may be able to contribute to an extent the differences in terms of a particular drug is successful in rodent model but the same drug 
is not able to show the desired efficacy in the human model. Why? Because this GULO gene is able to produce sufficient amount of ascorbic acid in the rodent model. However, in case of human model, the amount of ascorbic acid in the human body, it can vary. And that may be one of the explanation here that from one human to the other human, same drug may be able to show difference in efficacy, difference in effects, maybe why? Because the amount of uh, ascorbic acid from the diet sources or from the external sources in human may vary from one individual to the other. So that may be one of the explanation that once a drug, it comes to the clinical trial for the human, there is a differences in terms of responses. There is a differences in terms of success and failure. However, once a drug is going to be tested for the rodent model or the rodent model, they have the GULO gene, right? So the level of vitamin C synthesis inside the rodent animal body is identical. And that is why most of the time in case of rodent model, the efficacy of the drug is almost appreciable or sometimes it is almost identical from one animal body to the other animal body. So that may be one of the explanations that the presence of GULO gene in case of rodent, the efficacy, the chance of success, chance of better result is more in comparison to the, the human where the GULO gene is missing. Most of this UDP d glucuronate is utilized for the drug metabolism or genobiotic metabolism. And that is why majority of the drug are metabolized by the human body in case of the human. And, and the efficacy is not as desired as observed in case of rodent model or like rat or mouse or the mice. That is what the very interesting fact is here. And definitely in future, it will be interesting to understand if really we are going to make a simulation, if we are really going to make an extrapolation from the rodent model to the animal model, it is logical to utilize the rodent or the mice or the rat with gulo knockout mice or the rat model, where then it will be almost identical to the human model because human is naturally gulo knockout. During the evolution process, the nature has knocked out and that is where the gulo gene becomes non-functional. But in case of rodent model, gulo is functional. That vitamin C synthesis is functional. So if we need to make a better extrapolation between animal model to the human, the same transgenic type of condition has to be created for the evaluation of any class of the drug. And that can be anti-cancer, that can be anti-diabetic or any. So that is what, so this particular uh, discussion, it opens up a thought process, which is not so appreciated in the field of pharmaceutical sciences or in the field of drug evaluation, what choice of the rodent model should be there so that we can say that rodent model is mimicking majority of the aspect of the human clinical body and their physiology, etc. Another very important point is the, the vitamin C is an antioxidant. So majority of the time, it may be able to alleviate the load of oxidative stress in the rodent model because it is naturally synthesized by the rodent model. But in case of the human, the, the vitamin C as an antioxidant is taken from the outside. And that is why the load of oxidative stress in human model will be different in comparison to the rodent model. So what I also propose that oxidative theory link with ascorbic acid or vitamin C and to the gulogy may be one of the also explanation for the differential 
efficacy of a particular drug when it is evaluated from the rodent model to the human clinical model. Thank you very much for listening and uh, I appreciate. Thank you very much. Keep listening and keep connecting with the thought process.